and there's a lot of buzz right now that there's some other big announcements coming. In the last week or so, we've seen two sets of rumors for new major mega shows, if you will, for AEW. One to include a potential discussion of where the Texas Rangers play in Dallas. So not a super show abroad, but a super show in Arlington where they've been running their esports arena show, their residency, if you will. The talk is they're going to run a baseball stadium next year. Eric, have you heard this? Yeah, I've heard it. You know, I've, I've kind of kept track of what's going on on a daily basis and you hear the, the rumors and sometimes the rumors are true and sometimes they're not, and, you know, the fun and it is fun sometimes to just try to discern, you know, what's real and what's not. <clears throat> But yeah, I've, I've, I've read the chatter, you know, it's on the one hand, I think it's kind of exciting conversation and what if all that, but then, you know, the business side of me goes, wait a minute, they're putting 2,500 people at their TV tapings and, you know, five, six, 7,000 people on average at their big pay-per-view events who, who amongst the brain trust an AEW thinks that a stadium is a good idea, but maybe there's a plan. You know, that's the thing about being on the outside is, you know, there's, there's a lot that you don't know. Even someone like me who thinks they know everything, <laughs> that's not really true, but who spent, you know, 35 years of my life in the professional wrestling industry at, at a lot of different levels, meaning involved in a lot of different aspects of the business. Um, I've seen the bottom. I bounced off the bottom a lot. And I've been at the top. So, yeah, um, I have an opinion. But sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. So who knows? We'll watch it. That's the fun part. I'm excited to see what's possible. And I know that there's a lot of naysayers out there who don't believe that, oh, they can't run a stadium show here in America. I don't know about that. I think uh, for the special event, if it's presented as special and it's made to feel special, it will be special. And I think Wembley is a great example of that. Like, Nobody would have guessed with the amount of television viewership they have in that market last year, that they would have sold the amount of tickets that they've sold. And now there's a talk that not only are they looking at Dallas, but they're looking at Australia, a stadium show in Australia. Uh, Dave Meltzer has come out and said, he's skeptical of that as far as how successful it might be because they don't have a ton of coverage in Australia, but allegedly they're working with some, some folks in the space, and um, as I understand it, as silly as this is, they they've got three cities picked out. So they're it seems like they're dead set that not only are they going to Australia, but they've narrowed it down to three markets. That's the rumor we're hearing, and I don't know if this means they've got some sort of a. And nobody ever talks about this, Eric. But as you know, a lot of times when you see some of these super shows go abroad. It's not just a promoter speculating. And I'm not suggesting this would be a paid show, but perhaps Australia, see, some of these other markets have seen the success and the revenue that's brought in when the WWE comes to town and runs a super show. Yeah. Maybe there's an opportunity here to, to use all three of these cities to almost create some sort of bidding synergy where someone is going to want some attraction from America that's going to get tens of thousands in theory of folks in the building. I like the Australia opportunity, Eric. I think I might be more bullish about that one than I am Dallas. What say you? I'm exactly the opposite. I think it's a look, I'm not saying it can't happen, but if you look at the success of Australian promotions, setting WWE aside, over the last 20 years, they're dismal failures. It's just the, first of all, you have the cost, the expense is astronomical. This is not like running, to, you know, cities, venues here in the States. I would say the costs are essentially going to be not three times as high, but damn close somewhere between two, two, two and a half and three times as high. Your expenses are just going to be through the there is no television there. So what to, to speak of, there's very little district. Nobody's watching the show in Australia. So you're bringing an American wrestling company that's on TV in America that nobody really knows about 
beyond the hardcore wrestling fans that know about it through the internet, because that's the only place it's available. Um, and you're banking on putting 10,000 seats in an arena. And, and by the way, I was in Australia recently. It's a very expensive place. Inflation has really, really, you know, we talk about it here in the States and, and around the world. And yes, it's an issue everywhere. It's really an issue in Australia. So to think that you're going to be able to put 10,000 people, you're going to convince 10,000 people to part with, I don't know what the ticket prices would look like, but they would have to be really high to help to even cover expenses. I just think unless there's a magic formula somewhere that I can't see, whew, horrible, wouldn't do it, but it's, it's exciting, you know, and I, here's, I was, this is not negative. Okay. This is just honest. That's all. If you're going to take it as negative, take it as negative. I don't really give a fuck. I'm not talking to you, Connor. I'm talking to the people listening to this thing who like to flood my social media with you're a hater, not a hater, just honest. So much of what we hear out of Tony Khan and AEW is hype. So much hype. So many big announcements. So many things are going to change the face of wrestling as we know it. It's just... So now that when we hear this kind of AEW is going to Australia, something that represents growth and momentum and success. That's the perception that announcements like this make. <clears throat> I don't believe it. I'm cynical. I'm not steadfast to the point where I'm going to say this is absolutely not true. I'm not going to do that because I don't know what's true and not true. I don't have details. I'm not behind the scenes. I'm not involved in conversations. I don't hear things. I don't pay attention to the things I do hear. But frankly, I probably hear a lot more than I remember because I don't pay attention to any of it unless it's from someone I'm getting information from someone who I, I know is credible and doesn't have a clear agenda. But in this case, all this hype, the big announcements, oh, it's the most imminent, and oh, it's this, this is the most important time in AEW's history, and oh, we're going to do a stadium show in Texas, and oh, we're going to Australia in these major markets to create a bidding war. In the meantime, you can't draw flies. Nobody's watching your show. Your audience is free-falling. There is no buzz outside of the Internet, and the only buzz on the Internet are from really, really hardcore, delusional, if I may say, AEW supporters, and which are fringe. That's a fringe audience. That's the perception of AEW, not just mine, but pretty much everywhere else, except for that fringe group of supporters. So I take all of this stuff, as exciting as it sounds, and hopeful, even for me, because it would represent growth and success, which is what I really want to see for AEW, as well as the business in general, including TNA, which, by the way, seem to be doing a pretty good job. They're, they're inching, right? They're not making giant leaps forward, but they're steady as she goes in, in moving forward. So I'm, I'm hopeful. But with regard to AEW, very cynical because Tony Khan relies so much on hype and perception and doesn't know how to bring, doesn't know how to put me down the bone, or at least he doesn't do it often enough to support the amount of hype that he puts out there. It is interesting to see, you know, how, um, I don't know. They're staying the course with AEW because when you take a look, like as you and I are recording on a Thursday morning, and collision, of course, is going to be live this Saturday and it's in Arlington, Texas, the same town where the rumor and innuendo is we're running a baseball stadium next year. There's 946 tickets out for that. And on Wednesday, September 4th, they're going to be in Milwaukee, not too terribly far, uh, you know, from the, the, the heart of the Midwest, if you will, the Chicago market and things like that. 1589 are the tickets that are out. Mm. But when you take a look at like what they're doing in Wembley, I mean, there's still over 40,000 tickets out for that show. How do you reconcile that Eric where 
domestically, it's one number, but this super show, I mean, there's gotta be something to the super show. That's the only thing I can wrap my head around. What say you? No, I look, I think, I, I think the, the Wembley was an outlier is an outlier. And I think so many people are, are and this is the, the you know, the, those who are very optimistic and with all due respect, have not really been in the business and, and know how to read the cards on the table. It's a, it's a one-off. It is not an indicator. It is not a data point. It represents, I think, an amazing appetite for professional wrestling, primarily because of the strength of the indie wrestling market in the UK over the last 10 years or so. There's been a lot of good stuff that have come out of the UK and, and, and Ireland and, and Scotland and you, anywhere you go, there's great independent wrestling on a pretty consistent basis. WWE has done a great job over the last 20 or 30 years of cultivating a, a generally a general professional wrestling audience. And AEW has come along, come along at the right time. And there's such a rabid interest in wrestling in general that Wembley's going to do great. It doesn't, it doesn't represent opportunity anywhere else on, on the planet. It's a one-off outlier. And if I was sitting in a meeting with a group of people, particularly if we were talking about making good financial decisions, and I know haters bring it on, bitches. Come up with something new. I fucking dare you. But if I was in a room and analyzing things, I, I, I would not be interested in hearing too much from anybody that would be discussing a stadium show in Texas or, or big arena shows, uh, you know, big, I'm talking about 15, 20, 30,000 seat venues, whatever in Australia, I wouldn't be interested in anything they had to say if they prefaced it with, yeah, but look what we're doing in Wembley. Because that would indicate to me somebody that's completely disconnected from reality. It's if you can't understand the unique nature of Wembley and the market in the UK, and you rely upon that to justify decisions that you're going to make anywhere else outside of the UK, I think it's flawed thinking. 